Yeah, man. This is Danny Dreadlock telling you say the time has come for the lion story to be heard. You know, here, there, everywhere. Have no fear. The lion story. One. This is the lion voice. Seeing production. Every time. What do you have to tell the people about Rastafari? <laughs> Light to the world. The king of kings and the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. I like himself. Where's my food? Hey, yo! Hey, yeah. I. Hear them high, hear the black king on the 23rd of July. So tell them guy who prays God up in the sky. It's a lie. The Almighty living on your life. From ancient times, them are try. Them Romans know them just open them suit and ties. Criminals ain't got no alibi, they stole my people, then them come spread out them genocide. Still, them couldn't kill. The lion will come conquer to the tribe. Go to tribulation, I your nice tribe, see separation, I your nice still rise. That's why we tell them in America, live Rastafari in a every ghetto area. We come to tell them in a Toronto straight at So you can see by the clip there that Ethiopia is on the verge of civil war and there's the, the, the group called FANO which um, in Amharic means the youth or volunteer soldier and you know they took this name from the, the, the people who rose up with his majesty to fight against the Italians so the Amhara are very pro Haile Selassie um, so you know I've seen um, things circulating online and I know some of our Rastafari bridge and very excited they're flying the line of Judah flag all of these things and um, I see these things and I have I'm I'm very cautious because while we love line of Judah flag while we love the pro Haile Selassie and the pro um, Solomonic dynasty we do not desire to see Ethiopia split we do not desire to see a civil war these things need to be discussed and mediated peacefully because the money that it's going to take to fund the arms that are going to have to be pumped in the development that's going to be delayed you know to fight this war only people that are going to benefit are the arms dealers and none of them are africans so you know we don't want war his majesty took a militant stand against war refusing to fight the derg even when he had the resources, the loyal soldiers, the manpower to do so. And this was to send a, a message to I and I as his children that the time for war has ended among the righteous. There comes a time for war, yes, we, we rise up against the Italians, but not against our brothers. Someone have to stop the cycle to break the generational curse of war. Because war is a curse. And His Majesty took a militant stand, which is why we heal him without apology. Um, behold the upright and mark the perfect man for the end of this man is peace. Uh, his majesty fulfill these things um, with his action. So, um, one of the things, as the item know, I am an author. And um, one of the, the root um, causes of the animosity between the Oromo and the Amhara comes from the time of Emperor Menelik when there was a vast expansion happening in the empire and Emperor Menelik um, you know decided to conquer the Oromo nation to the south to bring them into the nation rather than have the British or you know the Italians or some other foreign power conquer these nations first and this is why you know and there were some bloody conflicts RC you know, in certain regions that were very bloody. Um, you know, Menelik did not fight personally in, in, in most of these battles. You know, it was fought by his generals, but nonetheless, he was um, the emperor. He gave the orders. Menelik is also a man of war who fought on the battlefield, famously in the Battle of Harar with Ras Makonin and other battles as well. So, um, this is part of what brings the animosity. So, since we just celebrated Menelik's Erdstrong, Empress tied to Erdstrong, I said, let's do a deep dive into the life of Emperor Menelik, um, a, a part of our Ethiopian history series, and then we come up and then we'll look at this current conflict 
and see where does this conflict really um, arise from and then we're gonna also see the conflict with Tigray how that branches off when we look at it from a historical conflict we see that these um, nations have been at war for hundreds of years so when we talk about uh, the period of peace of relative peace that was during his majesty reign we see that that wasn't the norm it was an anomaly and this is what makes the work of his majesty so magnificent and this is why the powers that be have tried to suppress um, the accomplishments of his majesty during his reign so that the youths them these youths them that are fighting these wars know nothing about the king or his contribution because they came up in a time of the dirt and then the um you know the, the tigray government and the, these regimes removed Ayli Salati's legacy from the curriculum it's only now that these things are starting to come to the fore and this is partly why the amhara youth who are some of them starting to um unravel this legacy you know feel uh, cheated and the animosity and feel like they're being genocided or are trying to be wiped from Ethiopia so again um, let's do our deep dive I'm gonna read from my book I'm gonna read from chapter 21 and set the scene if anyone one of the things I love about Emperor Menelik his life if anyone, you know, we talk about Game of Thrones, we talk about Lord of the Rings, we talk about the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we talk about DC Comics, you know, all of these things that can fall into the epic fantasy type realm, you know, superhero realm, these things, uh, fantastical stories. Uh, if anybody can claim to have had a fantastical story, in the history of Ethiopia, it's Emperor Menelik. When you read his life story, it really um, reads like something out of a fairy tale book. Um, he was taken captive as a child, massive war um, at his doorstep when he was only a child, imprisoned, uh, grew up, you know, in a mountain fortress, in prison with the children of nobles from across the empire. So he grew up with Emperor Johannes, all of these other elites from the different kingdoms, their children as Emperor Tedros conquered, he took their children captive and had them educated together up in his mountain fortress at Magdala. So Menelik grew up in this environment and uh, you know had to plan his escape, made a daring escape, went back to Shoah, crowned. Um, you know, had to bow down before Johannes, Emperor Johannes, before him himself becoming Emperor after Emperor Johannes dies on the battlefield. So all of this is detailed in my book, but I just want to give the item some of the flavor of how we wrote it um, to capture the story. Um, and then again, we're going we're gonna to have this as a series that will lead us up to what is happening now and what should the Rastafari response be to this ethnic um, fighting that is currently happening on the roots thereof so um, chapter 21 of Haile Selassie's Ethiopia Rise of the Priest who Warrior King this is called Showa's Future in Captivity and this um, we pick up the story I'm not going to read the whole chapter but we pick up the story when Emperor Teodros armies are marching on Shoa. Um, so this uh, sub chapter is called The Fall of Shoa. The Fall of Shoa. In 1855, about 37 years before the birth of the baby boy, both Shoa and Gondar stood in the way of Emperor Tiedros II's rise to power and unifying campaign. They had to be neutralized. With an army of 50,000 men, the emperor entered Shoa. Emperor Tiedros II met little resistance. Menelik II's father, King Haile Malakat, was gravely ill by then and ultimately died before having a chance to face Tiedros II in battle. His body was quickly buried by his followers. 
Emperor Theodos II admired the legacy of Showa, and he was looking forward to the honor of meeting the king or facing him in battle. When his imposing army of war-hardened soldiers marched into Showa, inspiring awe in the highland inhabitants, Tedros II did not believe that Haile Malakat had already died. He therefore ordered the king's body to be dug up and wept upon seeing it with his own eyes. It is written that Tedros II ensured that Haile Malakat was reburied with all of the honors due to a king and he personally attended the funeral. The emperor's gesture demonstrated a sharp change from the pettiness of the era of princes and also aided his mission to win the hearts and minds of his countrymen. His vision was to unify Ethiopia and he recognized Shawa's growing importance to the empire. He thus left the governance of Shawa to a Shawin, making Haile Malakat's brother the new governor. In order to ensure that there would be no challenge to his throne for Shawa, the emperor took the king's only son captive to remain a prisoner in his mountain fortress of Magdala. That son, whose birth name was Sahaili Mariam, would join the other princes of the noble houses of Ethiopia and be instructed in the new vision of united Ethiopia under Christ. At the tender age of 11, he found himself away from his conquered homeland and at the beginning of an epic journey to the throne of the world's most ancient empire. Well, the leaders of the world are feeling their responsibility to lead the youth them to a brighter future. Well, I and I, I and I hear the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Earth's rightful ruler. Her goes to free us the far I crowd, unconquerable. Me come to tell them I'm a Babylon, they're falling down to far right, it's mongrel. Me come to tell them about the free us the far I crowd. Me come fit and them rob a Babylon They're falling down to far right This uncle yo Me come fit and them out Holy Papa palace intrigue In fighting the Queen Solomon see Well Empress tied to want her family fi lead Well King Michael want him son fi lead But King Michael now watch the orphan Married to him niece who get up every day and I study and I read He work and he pray every day He achieve them say you're the leader Every ancient leader just to wave us the far I crown And come trouble Me come fi tell them I'm a Babylon They're falling down to far right It's uncle yo Me come fi tell them how to wave us the far I crown And come trouble we come to tell them I'm a Babylon They're falling down to far right This uncle yo Well that's Michael Son was having a good time When he should mind The affairs of the state Cause he's descend from the great line Of them men like the second But he's stepping on toes Of his elders Treat his women like hoes He exposed Now we working With the Ottoman Turks Say he's descending from Muhammad But that's not how this works See the crown was anointed by the Orthodox Church So if you are ruling as I don't have to put Christ first I don't